This NFL season will culminate in Super Bowl 50 next February in Santa Clara, California. But the season opens with a surprise. A surprise in who will start under center for the Super Bowl defending champion, New England Patriots. As anyone with a sporting pulse knows, quarterback Tom Brady's four-game suspension by the league for his alleged role in Deflategate was vacated in a scathing decision by U.S. District Court Judge Richard Berman. To better understand the ruling and the impact of the case, we sat down with New York Law School professor Robert Blecker, a former special prosecutor and expert on the issue of crime and punishment, who has spent hundreds of hours poring over documents and details related to Deflategate. Professor, you just returned from an international philosophy of sport conference where you gave a speech entitled Cheating with the Rules. Uh, so who cheated here in Deflategate? Well, we know at least the NFL cheated and the Patriots may have. My best guess is that it never happened. But the NFL cheated. If you define cheating as I think it should be, which is the deceptive attempt to gain an unfair advantage by violating rules, the letter and spirit of rules. And if you look at the unfair advantage in the investigation from start to finish, there was a deceptive attempt to gain that advantage by the NFL. They leaked incorrect figures as to how much the balls had been deflated. And if, if you recall, right after that game, when Belichick had his press conference, he, in his usual surly manner, crossed his arms and said, I've told you everything I know. We can't explain it. I've told you everything I know. We can't explain it over and over and over again, which made him look guilty. But really, the reason he couldn't explain it was because it wasn't to be explained. It never happened. Before we get any further, let's establish one thing. Are you a Patriots fan or not? No, I don't like them. And um, I won't be rooting for them to succeed this year, as I didn't root for them to succeed last year. But I very much rooted for Brady to succeed in the uh, postseason contest uh, as to guilt and um, the attribution of guilt and the process by which it was attributed. Judge Berman and his ruling cited what he called significant legal deficiencies in the NFL's argument. Well, much of what the judge found, of course, was was correct. The the uh, process was foul. But beyond that, the well, let's stop for a second. The process itself, because that's what Judge Berman really seemed to focus on, that the process itself was fundamentally unfair to Tom. Correct. Yeah, it was. Um, from start to finish. By the way, in those early press conferences, when I said, we can't explain it, we can't explain it, it was always predicated upon the truthfulness of the NFL. No one ever thought of doubting the legitimacy of the figures. Beyond that, there was no notice to Brady as to exactly um, what punishment would follow and, and, and where he was being tried in violation of. They came out with a with a conclusion that he was, quote, generally aware of the improper behavior of others. There is no standard of general awareness. It's not defined anywhere. It's not listed anywhere. There had never been a, a suspension for an equipment violation. There had never been a suspension for refusing to cooperate in an investigation. Never. And yet here he was suspended for four games. So th the punishment was disproportionate to the crime if the crime happened. There was no adequate notice. And what the judge, I think, thought was especially outrageous is this pretense of an independent investigation. And it's interesting, if you read the judge's ruling, he puts independent in quotes right up front. Now, the only well, time every single time the word independent is mentioned in Judge Berman's ruling, there are quotes around. Yes, quotes, or else it's bolded for, for emphasis. There was no independence here. This was an in house investigation. And some commentators, of course, have pointed out that Goodell acted as judge and jury. A person cannot be a judge in his own case. We've known this in Western culture for 25 centuries, ever since, well, 30 centuries, ever since Odysseus had himself tied to the mast. As part of your digging, you made a very interesting discovery uh, in one appendix of the Wells Report uh, relative to the gauges used um, prior to the AFC Championship game. Um, you called it the smoking gun. Tell me about these gauges. Were they the referees' gauges? Were they the team's gauges? Whose were they? They were Wolf Anderson's own personal gauges. They were inexpensive gauges that you could buy at a sporting shop. They've come to be known classically as the logo gauge and the non-logo gauge because one of them had the Wilson W logo on the back and the other one did not. They really should have been called the higher reading gauge and the lower reading gauge because the higher reading gauge consistently reads higher by about 0.4 PSI. Look, if you want to know how much something has dropped, 
you've got to measure it with the same gauge before the game as you do at halftime. So essentially here, nobody knows really or can remember accurately which gauge was used at what time during what procedure. Oh, the ref remembers. The ref remembers which of his own two gauges he used. But he according remembers. to the report, he doesn't remember. He right. misremembers or they can't clearly remember what Walt Anderson said he was using. Correct. So in these two pictures, as we look at them, you're saying it was purposeful that the way they were presented, and I think your words were the artful shifting of the rulers to make the gauges seem more similar. In looking at the photograph, I went, oh my God, I can't believe it. They put the rulers under it, and on, under one, they start the needle at the zero point, and under the other, they shift the ruler so that they started at the point two inch so as to make the needle appear longer to the untrained eye. Nobody noticed it. I didn't notice it until the fourth time I read it. That just passed by. But that should have been brought to the attention of, first of all, on appeal to Goodell to show the obvious clear bias. And then it should have been brought to the attention of the judge. And it wasn't. It should have been brought to the judge's attention. And it would have served two purposes simultaneously. One would be to show the unfairness of the investigation. But the other would also to be to suggest the innocence of Brady. Go back to the gauges for a second. As, as, as I read it, one was 1.4. Right. The other one was 0.7. Right. So one was twice as big as the other one. Yes, and, it, and more severely bent. And more severely bent. So you're saying that Walt Anderson, the referee for the game, should have been, clearly been able to remember what gauge he was using. Yes, should have and did. You mentioned things that Judge Berman called the NFL on. One of the biggest ones was um, at the beginning, Brady was accused of being, quote unquote, at least generally aware uh, of inappropriate uh, conduct by the equipment managers of the Patriots. That later goes to, by Commissioner Goodell, later determines that, quote, he knew about, approved of, consented to, and provided inducements and rewards in support of the scheme. Judge Berman took great issue with that veto legal logic. Yeah, and for good and for good reason. Look, when I first read the Wells report, I thought they cheated. When when and, and truthfully, I sort of hoped they did because I don't like the Patriots. I still don't like the Patriots as a team. And and part of this So what changed your mind? Science can explain it. And increasingly there have been a rising chorus of voices, including a Nobel Prize winning chemist who says that the science was junk at the appeal the dean of the Yale School of Management said that statistics were junk. Increasingly, the more you read, the more blogs you read, the more you think it through, the more you realize that this is based on a tissue of lying. Professor, since the ruling, there has been a certain sentiment that Tom Brady um, got away on a legal technicality. Um, do you see it that way? No, not at all. That's very unfortunate, and you're right, pervasive comparison right now, that this is like... Uh, failing to receive your Miranda warning or having a defective search warrant. The defects in this investigation have nothing to do with technicality. The defects in this investigation undermine the finding of guilt. The defects, the bias in this investigation tends to support the innocence. In this whodunit, I think the most probable correct answer is nobody. It wasn't done. It never happened.